Hey guys, welcome to PyMonk Basics. In this playlist, I'm gonna go over how to use PyMonk. I don't feel like there's enough tutorials out there on how to actually use PyMonk, and I'll do that now. Uh, this tutorial is assuming that you've completed the Pi game tutorials, or at least know Pi game well enough to understand uh, the display aspects of PyMonk, because PyMonk doesn't really have a good built-in display, and I'll be using all the information from the Pi game tutorials to kind of help us display all the physics that we'll be creating with PyMonk. We'll start by importing PyGame and we'll import PyMonk. And a lot of this stuff is going to be review of the PyGame uh, creating the, the display video, but I think that's okay. Um, so we'll start by creating, well, the display. We'll say PyGame.Display.SetMode. Set mode is gonna be our uh, function that creates a display and based off the number of pixels that we've given it. So it goes X, Y, and a tuple. So I'll do 800, 800. And then we need a way of exiting the display, which we could do with pygame.quit. And then last thing we need to do, actually I already forgot it, <laughs> is right before we create the display, we need to initialize pygame. This just starts some things up behind the scenes. Uh, it, there's, there's sort of a lot going on behind the scenes of Pygame, and it's not important for you to completely know all of it, but I uh, recommend just starting off every script with pygame.init. So if I run this, I should get a Pygame to display, but I don't get it for long. So let's do that one more time. And you can see down here that I've run it, but it's gone because I create the display and I immediately quit. So as you can imagine, we're going to be putting stuff right in here in order for us to actually display whatever we want in our simulation or in our game. So the whole game should all be in here. And then when we're done with it, then we should go on to this pygame.quit function. So of course, we're going to need some kind of infinite loop or at least infinite enough until we want to exit the, the uh, simulation or the display. So we'll do that with a while loop. So I can say while. I'll do while true for now. And what we want to do within this loop is update the display. So that way, whatever we want to draw onto the screen, whatever we want to change onto the screen or the display, we can do within this loop. So I'll say pygame.display.update. Now we don't want it to just update a bunch of times in a row. We want it to update at a set amount of frames per second, right? So if we say 50 frames per second, uh, 50 frames per second, excuse me, then we want this loop to run at only 50 times a second. So Pygame has a built-in way of handling that. And to handle that, we need to first create a clock object and we're gonna save it in the variable clock, just like we created a display object and we saved in the variable display. Uh, the clock object comes from Pygame, not Pymonk, Pygame.time.clock. And within this clock object, there's a method, clock dot tick is the name of the method. And in here we can give it a frames per second. So I'm just gonna save it in a variable called frames per second. So this takes a number, uh, we'll do 50, which is gonna be the frame rate that we want to run this while loop. So every time this function is called, it holds until this frame rate can be achieved based on the last time it was called. So, so far we've only done stuff to create the display. Um, and I can go ahead and run this and I've created a display, excuse me. I've created a display window, but there's actually no way to get out of it because we haven't given it what's called events. So events are things like pressing the mouse button, pressing the keyboard, pressing the X button even. And there is no event handling system right now that we've implemented. And so the only way to kill the, the display is by literally doing what I just did, which is having it not respond. So we need to create a system of determining events. So determining mouse button clicks, keyboard clicks, X button clicks, every time the frame refreshes. So to do that, we can loop through the current events by saying for events in, and to get the current events, it's pygame.event.get, I believe. And so this will loop through all the current events and give it to us with event. And the one we want is the event type so event type is sort of the attribute that is sort of the identifier of what the event is. And if that event type equals pygame.quit. So if the event type, the identifier, is equal to the pygame.quit identifier, this is given as an event every time the X button is clicked. So what to do here when every time the X button is clicked? 
Well, we want to exit out of this while loop. However, I can't say break right here, right? Because if I say break right here, all I'm doing is exiting out of the for loop. I'm not gonna be exiting out of the while loop. So to exit out of the whole while loop, the cleanest way I know how to do that in Python is to say return and just make this whole while loop a function. So I'm gonna define game maybe. And then down here, we can actually go ahead and run game. Now, every time I hit this return, I'm going to exit out of the game function. And that way I can go over to Pygame quit and I can quit my display. So this should be great. I'm gonna go ahead and run this and we've created a display and I can exit out of the display at will. So now here's pretty much where we are at in the Pygame display video. Uh, I'm gonna take things a step further and I'm gonna add PyMonk to this simulation now. So one thing we need to do is we need to create another uh, variable here called space. And space is gonna hold our PyMonk space. And a PyMonk space is an object that holds all the other objects and joints and collision handlers and all the other information that we want in our physics simulation. So in our physics world, we have a space. And the goal always, whenever we're integrating PyMonk and Pygame, is to integrate all the position values of this space to the position values of the display. So as a simulation space, we need to pass time within that space. And I think it makes sense for every time us to refresh the page to pass some time through the simulation. So to do that, we say space.step. So step through the simulation of a certain time. So it wants a DT, a delta T, a certain amount of time to pass through the simulation. And I think it makes sense to have this be the one over frames per second. So every time this runs, let's say we're at 50 frames per second, this while loop will run one over 50 seconds. And it would make sense for our simulation to also run at one over 50 seconds every time. So again, I can run this. You can't really see the PyMonk simulation because all that's behind the scenes and we haven't added objects to the screen yet. And we'll do that in future videos. But this right here is gonna be our template for the rest of this playlist and any other projects I do from here on out with PyMonk.